After taking a month-long break to return to the States, the PCC Cup Series is back at the Dwyer Speed Park. We raced here last year, and it was uh, quite the wreck fest in turn one, so drivers have been warned to take it easy going into Goliath in the first lap this year. As this was added fairly late in the year to the schedule, uh, the entry list was the smallest we've seen all season, and only eight cars missed the show this year, and that includes, uh, well, two part-time entries were also entered by Johnson Racing and Retro 80 Racing in preparation for next season. Let's take you to the track. Surprise pole sitter here at Dwyer as Andy Lambert, last year's champion, wins the pole. He brings the field down to the green flag. This has been an absolutely disastrous season for this 34 team. They've failed to qualify for a bunch of races. He's had to resort to the champions provisional. And we've got three wide as Bobby Dowler tries to force the issue up the middle, trying to sneak his way through. And we've got contact in the top five as Bobby Dollar sneaks his way through and he will take the lead as now they fan out, head into Goliath. Dave Hetzel makes some contact with people and we've got a wreck. Headed into the S's here, and it looks like we've got quite a few cars involved as Bobby Dollar takes the lead. Headed out of the S's, we're going to go on board Bobby Dollar and see exactly what he saw as he tries to force it three wide in here. It looks like, oh, looks like Cordova's pushed up into him, and he collided with Burnfart Jr. That sent Burnfart Jr. up the track and into a couple other cars. As now we look back, and we see a couple other cars get into each other as Tom Wilson goes slamming into that barrier as we get an overhead view. And we see that they just didn't make it work, and Tom Wilson took a really hard hit there. And it looks like he's going to be done for the day as we go on board Preston Bell and look back in the pack and see exactly what happened. From his viewpoint, you see Tom Wilson go slamming into the wall there. Looks like Preston Bell gets hooked by somebody. Not sure who that was who got hooked by. But he comes out driving through the smoke, and he slams into the back of Cameron Taylor, and his day, I believe, is going to be done. You also see John Bracci sitting there in his stricken car. I think he got turned into the wall there. As here we look at John Kirkpatrick, and he's currently running in one of the packs in the back. I guess this team did something right because he's actually kind of keeping pace with everybody despite some of the damaged cars in this group that may be slowing them down. But John Kirkpatrick actually appears to be doing something right for once, and oh, he got pinched there by Pete Maverick as he starts to lose the pack a little bit. Lap 1, Nicholas Cordova, Brian Gallagher, two of the leaders dive onto the pit. Onto the pit. Uh, we've got Ryan Jeffries, Dave Hetzel, Sam Brown, among others coming in. Mark Donovan driving the Retro 80 Racing. Fourth car uh, looks to be damaged, so tough break for him. He was looking for a strong run here today as Bobby Dollar opens up his lead over Joe Craig who has taken second place from Andy Lambert. Andy Lambert has slipped back to third but Bobby Dollar talk about an underdog this season. He's run the entire season unsponsored. Here he leads at Dwyer. Coming out of the pits, Ryan Jeffries. Oh! He makes contact with Sam Brown and he turns him into Tom Wilson on pit road. Not sure what that was about but those three are teammates. I'm not sure if he was angry at him about something but we're going to go on board Ryan Jeffries and you just see that he just hooks him into the pits, and uh, I don't really know what that was about, but I think that the team is going to have a word with him. Here's Ingrid Hadeland filling into the 23, and she gets hooked by Lewis Jones, goes into the wall, and she goes over in the S's, and that takes Kelly Blackwater and Lewis Jones with her into the wall. We're going to go on board Greg Woodard and see exactly what he saw as Ingrid Hadeland, somewhat slow on the start, but she gets hooked into the wall, goes over, and will go into the wall and out of the race here on lap number three as she was trying to hold off Lewis Jones. As now, Joe Craig is starting to catch Bobby Dollar. Bobby Dollar not exactly the fastest on these tracks, but he's doing a good job so far staying in front of Joe Craig. Joe Craig just has much more experience on these wide, sweeping turns. It's kind of like a super speedway here in that manner, so uh, I could understand how he could be at an advantage as he makes a move on the inside head into the final turn. Is he going to be able to make it stick? I think he might be able to as he pulls he pulls side by side with Bobby Dollar and I think he's going to gain an advantage down this uh, straight here. I think he will. No, Bobby Dollar is going to do so. But coming here to the line, I think the lap might be snagged by... Yes, Joe Craig led that lap. 
just barely, just by a nose, but Joe Craig will take the lead headed into Goliath here on lap number five. Andy Lambert has slipped back to fifth place, but he is still having a very strong run. This car just is not up to snuff with everyone else. He, I think he might have left his qualifying setup in. Uh, scratch that, he's currently in battle for the fourth place with Gaspar D'Souza, who's also having a strong run. The Raptor teammates are up in the top five. Both of them are in the top five. Here is Claire Aussier, and she currently runs in 15th on lap number four. She started 34th, so that can tell you how much she's gained in the past few laps, as she's currently working on Chester Benson for the 13th position. Chester Benson having a very strong run here today as Ian Elias dives into the pit lane along with Michael Grant. Uh, those cars are uh, trying to play some fuel strategy here as uh, the fuel is uh, going to be an interesting topic as we go later into the race due to uh, the small fuel tanks that these cars are running. Cale Bernfart Jr. takes second away from Bobby Dollar as he slowly slips back in the field. Here is Cody Deek in the number 31 as he gets hooked by Damon Jones, holds onto the car, just drives it a bit wide in the turn. There he comes back onto the track and he's battling with Chester Benson. Now this is a battle for 12th place as uh, all three of those cars are having a very strong run here today. The end of lap five, Bobby Dollar is playing some pit strategy as he brings his car onto the pit road uh, after uh, running in third place. I believe he's trying to play the strategy game here as Jacob Eichholz, who is also running in the top five, brings his car onto the pit. Uh, these two are trying to get some strategy out of the deal. Here is Damon Jones, and he's currently running in ninth place on lap six. This is definitely the strongest run he's had all year. This is the best run of his career by far, as he's currently holding station in front of Claire Aussier here, as uh, he's going to try and hold her off, but that car, the 11 car, seems unstoppable at the moment. Although, Claire Aussier, at the end of lap six, she is bringing her car onto the pit lane, uh, trying to play some strategy here, and uh, maybe hopefully get herself up into a better position at the end of the race. Here's Ramsey Cockiner, and he is currently running in the uh, third position here on lap number seven, right in front of Lenny Jacobs, who is uh, very accustomed to these kind of tracks, these long sweeping turns, as it looks like Andy Lambert is diving onto pit road after losing a few more positions on track. That car is definitely not uh, up to pace with everybody else, as Barton Sandy also dives onto the pit road. Here is John Kirkpatrick, and he is currently uh, running about 31st place. There are some cars still on track that are uh, behind him at the moment, but what I said about him kind of being on pace, no, he, he's still not. He's still as slow as ever, but at least uh, because of some of the accidents that occurred, he is uh, running in front of a couple cars at the moment. Here's Ryan Jeffries, who's going to try and pass him there for a position. Here's Joe Craig under attack from Kale Bernfart Jr. for the lead. Kale Bernfart Jr. takes a peek on the inside, but he can't hold it, so he falls back in line. At least he's giving it a good effort trying to get back up into the lead. Here is Chester Benson, currently running in 10th place on lap number nine. He is running for that position against Daniel Lackleiter, as uh, these two are quite surprising up here in the top 10. I did not expect to see either of them up there, but right behind them are the retro 80 racing cars of Stringfellow Vincent and Pete Maverick as Stringfellow Vincent, he makes a move on the inside of Chester Benson. I think he's going to try and take that position from him for the 10th position. Oh no, he goes side by side with his teammate. Now he's trying to fight back on the outside, but it's not going to work as now they're side by side with each other. The two retro 80 racing teammates trying to make a move as Daniel Lechleiter pulls away. Now Bobby Dollar Bobby Dollar here after his pit stop, he's fallen back to P16 by lap 10. Tough break for him, but he's going to try and have to work his way up through the field by playing the strategy game, waiting for other cars to pull into the pits. Here is Clara Kindall. She currently is running in fourth place. She's had a very strong European tour, but here we are back in the States, and she's trying to regain some of that ground. Uh, trying to get herself back up into the championship hunt, but she's doing a good job of that so far. She's in a Sar Eagle sandwich right now between Ramsey Cockiner and Lenny Jacobs. She's currently running in fourth place, trying to make a move towards the front. I think her car has the speed, but uh, it doesn't look to be quite up to snuff with Ramsey Cockiner's at the moment. Here is uh, Stringfellow Vincent and uh, Pete Maverick, excuse me. 
and they are running side-by-side -side Retro 80 Racing teammates, and uh, they're doing one heck of a job up here. They're currently running in 9th and 10th at the moment, right behind Cody Deke, and I believe that's Damon Jones, as it looks like Daniel Lecklater and Barry Juveno are pulling into the pits, trying to uh, figure out this fuel mileage game. They're going to have to pit twice here at Dwyer, so they're trying to figure out what lap they should come in as now. Joe Craig and Cale Burnfart Jr. bring their cars into the pit lane as well as Ramsey Cockner, Lenny Jacobs, and Clara Kindall. This is lap number 13 as a lot of the cars are making their, schedule, their first scheduled green flag pit stop. As now it looks like pretty much all of the leaders are following suit except for Pete Maverick. Pete Maverick comes around and he is... I don't think he's going to lead this lap as Cale Burnfart Jr.'s pit is right in front of the start-finish line but he is currently leading the race right now. Pete Maverick driving for Retro 80 Racing, having the run of his career right now, as he currently leads here at Dwyer. Pete Maverick, a rookie, he's shown some impressive form. He's currently 10th in points right now, and a very strong run would do him some good. Now Barton Sandy, he breaks down here uh, on lap number 13, gets clipped bit there by Michael Grant. Michael Grant goes through the dirt, and Barton Sandy will just kind of stop there on track, and uh, he's going to need a tow truck to get back. Ramsey Cockner pulls out of the pits, and he is going to beat off. He's going to beat off Cale Burnfart Jr. in the pit lane, as he basically is going to take the lead once Green Flag pit stops cycle out, I believe, as Burnfart Jr. was his main competition, as well as Joe Craig, as now. Here comes Pete Maverick. I believe he's going to dive onto the pits this lap. This is lap number, I believe this is lap number 14. As Pete Maverick, yes, Pete Maverick does dive onto the pits. I think he'll get credit for leading this lap. So uh, he'll get an extra bonus point, and that will be integral in the championship. As now Bobby Dollar takes the lead back. Pit stops have... Uh, are coming close to being cycled out, but Bobby Dollar, he, t he made a pit stop very early on. So he's going to lead this lap and uh, get some bonus points for that. As Bobby Dollar comes around, and this is lap number 15, and he is pitting again. I guess that pit stop very early on was an unscheduled pit stop. He might have had a puncture or some kind of problem with his car, but he brings his car back onto the pit lane as now Gaspar de Souza takes the lead in this number 70, in this number 92 car, excuse me. But Gaspar de Souza, this. He has always been strong here at Dwyer. Last year he finished second here in this same car, although it was number 37. But Gaspar de Souza is doing a great job here today. Currently he's, well, he's been running in the top five all race as he brings that car around the final turn and he is going to lead that lap as Claire Aussier brings her car into the pits here on lap number 16 as well as Andy Lambert. Andy Lambert has fallen quite a ways back in uh, the running, as here is Chris Benson doing battle with, uh, I believe that's Dan Lecklider for the 20th position, as Lecklider hooks him and turns him into the wall, and he goes hard into the wall, and he is going to go out of the race. Tough break for Chris Benson. He was having a decent run here today at Dwyer, as we go on board Lecklider and see what he saw. Uh, he peeks a nose on the inside, and it looks like he just didn't let up, and he turned him straight into the wall. Dan Lecklider, uh, taking no prisoners, I guess, trying to get positions for whatever they're worth, as now it looks like uh, Gaspar de is going to bring his car into the pit lane here on lap number 17 of 30 and surrender the lead over to Ramsey Cockiner, who uh, I guess that pit strategy really worked out for him, as now he's got uh, quite a good lead over the rest of the field now. Uh, Ramsey Cockiner trying to take his first ever win. I can't even see second place behind him. But here is Damon Jones, who has moved up into fourth place by lap 18. I don't think he's pit yet, but that is Joe Craig in front of him. Joe Craig was leading earlier on, and now Damon Jones is racing him for the third position. Damon Jones having the run of his career here today at Dwyer, trying to do what he can to get himself noticed. Uh, for next season. I don't know if this team is coming back, but he's doing one heck of a job trying to get his name out there and uh, onto a couple prospective teams lists. Here's Chester Benson, who's also doing one heck of a job. He's currently in sixth place on lap 19. He is doing, uh, he is doing this car a lot of uh, justice right now, trying to get himself noticed, trying to get himself back up into the top 30 in points 
which uh, he's currently out by quite a bit right now. As Ramsey Cockner, he's bringing his car into the pits on lap number 19. Uh, this is a scheduled stop, and he stopped much later than everybody else, as now it looks like Greg Max is also bringing his car in as Joe Craig takes the lead back from Ramsey Cockner. He's currently uh, trying to bring this car uh, up in points as well. I believe he might also be out of the top 30 at this point. If he's not, then he is very close to the limit. I think he is out of the top 30, but he is doing this car all that he can. He's putting a few cars a lap down right now. There's Cameron Taylor who is damaged, and Ben Worthington now. What Worthington is struggling. He's been struggling for a while. That's actually probably one of the cars that uh, I believe that Joe Craig will end up passing in owner points if he keeps driving like this as Worthington has had a abysmal season ever since the first half. Here's Clara Kindall bringing her car into the pits, and she slams into the back of uh, of John Kirkpatrick as Kirkpatrick tries to get his car slowed down, slams into the wall, and I believe that that will be the end of the day for Clara Kindall as she brings her car into the pit lane. Now we're going to look at, uh, I believe this is Cody Deke. He's currently running in third place right in front of, uh, that is Pete Maverick as I think that Damon Jones dove onto the pits uh, to get his uh, scheduled pit stop done, but Cody Deke is having one heck of a run. He's currently running right behind Cale Burnfart Jr., who is lined up to take the lead once Joe Craig pits, and Joe Craig is currently pitting now here on lap number 22. He is pitting from the lead, and I think that, yes, Cale Burnfart Jr. is going to take the lead back from Joe Craig. So now Cale Burnfart Jr. gets his chance to lead a couple laps, but Cody Deke and uh, I believe that is Pete Maverick back there, they are coming towards the front slowly but surely as they are working together and drafting in these long straights. But I think that Pete Maverick is trying to get uh, back up to uh, Cody Deke, trying to challenge him for a second place here. Cale Burnfart Jr. having a stellar run here today as now we look at Andy Lambert and Robert Nelson as they turn each other into the inside wall in Goliath and I believe that both of those cars have some severe damage, uh, suspension damage as both of those cars are slowing on the track going uh, quite a bit slower than we'd expect as it looks like Rob Nelson is going to take the position from Andy Lambert's stricken car as they work their way through it looks like yeah, they definitely have some problems with both of those cars. I think both of those cars are going to drop out of the races. Now, Cale Burnfart Jr. is currently leading over Cody Deke, but Ben Worthington gave him some trouble when he was trying to get by. As now, Cody Deke is working his way towards the lead right now. Cale Burnfart Jr. is not looking as fast as he did earlier. I think that car is starting to fall off a little bit as Pete Maverick works his way around Ben Worthington now. So we've got a three-car race for the lead here. Late in the going, this is lap number 24 of 30, as now Cody Deke makes a move on the inside, trying to take the lead away from Kale Burnfart Jr., and I think he's going to do so. Entering the final turn, as now Cody Deke takes the lead here at Dwyer with just six laps to go, and it looks like he's positioning himself to go onto the pit lane. Yes, he does. Cody Deke is bringing his car into the pits, so Cody Deke and Kale Burnfart Jr. bring their car into the pits as well as, uh, no, scratch that, Pete Maverick does not bring his car into the pit, so Pete Maverick takes the lead as he brings his car through Goliath now. Pete Maverick trying to make his fuel stretch, trying to make it to the end and take his first ever PCC Cup Series victory here, as now he's currently working his way around, that's Cameron Taylor that he's putting a lap down. This would be uh, quite the event. Pete Maverick, a rookie, taking his first ever win at one of the most difficult tracks to drive at. This uh, track with its long sweeping corners, one of the more dangerous tracks we go at on the PCC Cup Series schedule. That would be something. Now here we've got Clara Aussier, and she's currently running in seventh place with just five laps to go, trying to make it to the finish. She has been the model of consistency this season. She, is, she has just been able to combine runs and just make her car always end up near the front of the race near the end and that is why she currently has a nearly two race lead in the championship right now but I don't know if she's going to be able to make her fuel stretch to the end I'm not sure if she can do that because she's reporting that her car is uh, running low on fuel and she's starting to enter fuel conservation mode 
in that number 11 car as now. Oh, Kale Bernfart Jr. and Chester Benson hook each other into the wall in Goliath as Chester Benson trying to defend his position and Kale Bernfart Jr. being quite over exuberant when trying to make his way back up towards the front and I think that with that hood damage that might be the end of the day for Kale Bernfart Jr. So another contender falls by the wayside due to some damage as now Pete Maverick on lap number 27 just four laps from the finish he is reporting that he is running low on fuel and he has to bring his car into the pits so Pete Maverick unfortunately will not win this race he is trying to get himself back into the top 10 but Ramsey Cockner he last pit on lap 19 so I think that he should be able to make it to the finish Ramsey Cockner takes the lead here with just four laps to go and uh, I think that he's going to be able to pull it off if he can save fuel just a little bit more. Joe Craig moves up to second here, and uh, I think he's going to hold on to that position because he doesn't need to pit anymore. And here is Gaspar D'Souza currently running in third place trying to hold off. Uh, Greg Maddox for that position is now. That means that Raptor Racing is 2-3 here, so that would be one hell of a finish for them as they... Uh, desperately need a really good run with both of their cars up in the top five they haven't had that in quite a long time since I believe the super speedway is as now Ramsey Cockner on the final lap it looks like Joe Craig has caught because Ramsey Cockner has entered fuel conservation mode he's trying to save as much fuel as he can but I think he's going to be able to hold out as Ramsey Cockner rounds the final corner brings that car down the front straightaway and Ramsey Cockner is going to be your winner here today at the Dwyer Speed Park as the PCC Cup Series has returned to the North American Tour for its final stretch. Ramsey Cockner is your winner here today. Joe Craig and Gaspar D'Souza round out your podium. We've got Greg Maddox in fourth place, a very strong run for him. Jacob Eichholz rounds out your top five. Lenny Jacobs, a great run for him in sixth place. Pete Maverick, after that pit stop, he fell down into seventh place, but it's still a very good run for him. Cody Deke finishes a very strong 8th. Stringfellow Vincent makes it two Retro 80 racing cars in the top 10. And Damon Jones, a round of applause for him. He gets a top 10 at Dwyer Speed Park despite running only very well at uh, super speedways. I guess the wide sweeping turns uh, were very uh, reminiscent to super speedways for him. A uh, round of applause for him. And I do believe that Bobby Dollar, after his early race domination, he did finish in 11th place, so a good run for him.